Hey everyone, uh, the last video for the lab is going to be a video on p-hacking. P-hacking! This video is kind of about how to p-hack and also why you shouldn't do it. Uh, p-hacking, which is sometimes known as data dredging or other names, is the practice of reformulating hypotheses and research questions and data sets and then computing p-values, or well actually not the data sets. Uh, you keep the same data set, but you reformulate your hypotheses and your research question and you keep the same data set and then you keep recomputing p-values for different hypotheses until eventually a statistically significant result is obtained. This is very bad practice and the results found by p-hacking are untrustworthy. p-values in general are somewhat controversial in the statistics uh, world. They're controversial enough to uh, warrant the creation of this document, the ASA statement on p-values, which is basically, uh, we're sick of you guys abusing p-values. So, uh, p-hacking is one way to abuse p-values by basically redoing your, your study until eventually you get a result you want. Um, when you're doing a study, you should have a well-defined problem prior to any testing. So you can do exploratory analysis with visualization. You can work on small subsets of the data set that you're not going to use later when testing to try to develop ideas. But you should be very wary of um, <coughs> um, uh, exploring data sets and then conducting hypothesis tests on them. The hypothesis testing framework is designed to work uh, when you haven't really seen the data before. If you've seen the data and then you start conducting hypothesis tests on it, you are no longer working with this with a random sample anymore. So, um, furthermore, you should probably um, reveal any prior analyses and failed hypothesis tests if you're going to try to publish your results. Um, and um, uh, if you are performing basically lots of tests and you stop when you finally get a significant result, you may be p-hacking. And you should, and um, and this is especially going to be the case if you, do not, if you do not disclose what you have done. Uh, here's an interesting little web app um, on uh, that, that kind of demonstrates uh, how p-hacking could possibly work. H hack your way to scientific glory. glory. This is from 538. You probably can tell that I really like 538. Um, you are a social scientist with a hunch the U.S. economy is affected by whether Republicans or Democrats are in office. Try to show a connection exists using real data going back to 1948. Uh, if your result uh, for your results to be publishable in an academic journal, you'll need to prove that they are statistically significant by achieving a low enough p-value. All right, so um, we want to show basically that um, uh, that either Republicans or Democrats make for a better uh, economy. So right now we've got. Uh, so having more Republicans or Democrats in office makes for a better economy. So we've actually got some terms that we need to define. Uh, we need to define uh, who is a Republican and who is a Democrat. Uh, like, who are the politicians? We could include governors and senators, representatives, presidents. Uh, we could include, uh, in, when we're defining the economy and how well the economy is doing, we could include employment, GDP, stock prices, and so on. Um uh, we could weight more powerful positions more heavily. We could exclude recessions because recessions are weird. Um, and over here, we've got our p-values. And we want to get a p-value less than 0.05. And if we get less than 0.05, then we win, right? We get published and we get the Nobel Prize and all that stuff. Um, probably not the Nobel Prize, but we would get a TED Talk. All right, here we go. Uh, we can also choose a party. Do we want... Uh, ooh, ooh, switching. All we have to do is switch to Democrats. And now we got... A better result. So Democrats seem to have a positive effect on the economy. All right. So let's now go back to Republicans. Let's include inflation. Oh, that's unpublishable. All right. Let's uh, remove inflation and remove employment. Ooh, we've got a publishable results now. Uh, Republicans make their economy worse. Okay. Uh, let's uh, throw this stuff in. Ooh, now the Republicans are making the economy better. What the heck, man? <laughs> so you can kind of see the problem. Uh, now they're making it worse. Uh, Democrats make it better. Uh, what happens if we include the president? 
we probably should not exclude uh, recessions, but let's include stock prices, inflation, uh, factor in the power of these offices. Uh, let's see if we switch to Democrats. Do we get anything better? No, no. Ooh, this, this it, it, it is kind of funny, though, uh, how it seems it's it's harder to get uh, with this thing that the Republicans are making the economy better. Um, but you still should get the point that if you're doing stuff like this, you don't have reliable results. And you need to be much more careful. This is just a demonstration of how p-hacking could possibly work. Um, so, oh, this we've made the Democrats making the economy worse. So here's here all I had to do was exclude GDP. So there are there's ways to possibly explore a data set, and in, because admittedly we don't always know the question that we want to ask, and sometimes we don't always like some of the, like this data set right here. This is the only data set. You can't possibly uh, substitute this data set out with another one. Um, so there are ways to possibly uh, try to consider multiple hypotheses at the same time. Uh, and in fact, you will see in many studies changes to the model uh, to investigate a property known as robustness. Uh, so they'll try out very, very many different formulations because, as you can tell from this from this uh, app, it's uh, it's not necessarily the case that terms are very easily defined. So you might so you do see sometimes um, uh, people in studies trying out different definitions of terms or different formulas for linear regression models to try to get a sense of how robust their results are and actually this little applet would be demonstrating that if we were trying to publish something on a relationship between democrats and republicans and the economy um uh, our results are actually not all that robust so it's uh it, it's not completely trustworthy so in that sense that that would be useful information to know that it's act that it's actually really hard to try and assess uh uh, a political party's effect on the economy. Um, that's, in fact, to me, interesting information and also hard to publish because of how publishing works. <laughs> uh, there's a... Like, I could go on about this, and I think I might make a stats side video about um, the issues with hypothesis testing and p-hacking and all that stuff, but I don't, I don't want to get too far into that. Basically, long story short, don't p-hack, have well-defined research problems, and you'll be, and you'll be fine. Um, all right, so that concludes the videos for the R Lab for Math 3070. Um, uh, you are not an R expert at this point. <laughs> you can now use R to do some basic statistics, but if you want to learn more about R, and I do recommend getting pretty familiar with R, um, um, the, uh, the lecture notes that I wrote for Math 3080, which also has an R Lab, uh, that can get you further. So you've learned a lot, but there's a lot more to learn, and I hope that you are willing to learn more about it. In fact, I think, uh, so there was a, if you want to learn more about R, uh, let's, uh, will this go back? Okay, let's just do this. Okay, so we will go to here. Here's my uh, lecture notes during the regular semester, which are actually longer. Um, uh, I uh, I wrote a blog post um, called Where to Go From Here that it was meant for this class. If you're interested in ways to learn uh, more about R and how and R programming, there are a few books that I can recommend. Uh, there are some classes that I can recommend, um, at least if you're at the University of Utah. Uh, there's uh, function documentation. There's the internet. You can follow Stack Overflow and ask questions there. You can follow our bloggers. Uh, this is a this is a blog aggregator. Uh, this was a way that I learned how to. Uh, well, I learned a lot of R just for a while, following very closely the stuff that was being posted on our bloggers. Um, there's users groups and mailing lists. Basically, you can read this uh, article here to get a sense of how you could possibly get better at R if you're interesting. And by far, um, uh, the best way to learn a code is to code a lot. 
So get do actual projects. Um, you know, not just not just demonstrations, not just example problems, not just exercises, but do real work. Do real work, and you will learn a lot. Um, the only way to really get better at this stuff is to honestly do real work. So um, uh, read this if you're interested um, in expanding your skills. It's a worthwhile thing to learn well, uh, since uh, R is also a well-paying language. It, it could be because the people who are uh, using R are in jobs like, statis- like statistics and data science that are generally well-paying. Um, but there's there's probably some relationship there. All right, so, but with that said, the R Lab is concluded, and um, I'm going to wish you all a good day and best of luck in your future. All right, bye-bye.